News in the world have been shrouded. The devs held an AMA over on Reddit where they got over 550 questions and spent a couple hours answering them. I looked through all of their answers and I'm going to hit the highlights here for you of what I thought was interesting or significant. So let's start by talking about building. They said that they do have more types of blocks in the works, but they can't really spoil what those are yet. I don't think that's a big surprise as continuing to give us new building blocks seems to be a theme with them that we all appreciate greatly. They were asked about transparent type rocks on building pieces and they said that transparency is a tricky one to get right, including from a performance issue, so they've avoided it for now, to be honest. But they do plan on looking at that again in the future, like glass windows and other things. They do promise that there will be new building and terrain materials that we can use in the future updates that may not be specifically what people are asking for in terms of transparency, but that will be usable. They don't currently have anything on their roadmap for invisible blocks, but it's not that they don't like the idea. And they do have a goal to continue improving their building system in ways to allow us to create even crazier builds. They are going to continue adding more props and decos with every update, including adding recipes for existing props that we have in the game. And they're open to our suggestions for that. Displaying things that we have is also something that they think about. And it sounded like being able to display weapons and shields is probably closer on the horizon maybe than armor stands. They are aware that there's a big call for a creative mode, particularly in the building community also, I would say. But it's not currently a part of their roadmap. They can imagine adding it eventually, but it would be way farther down the road. I'm wondering if maybe after 1.0. Photo mode and free cam is also another popular request they see in this area. And currently it's a uh, maybe. They did touch a bit on mod support in this area too. And they said that they just don't have the bandwidth right now to be able to do mod support. They're focusing on getting the core of the game first and getting it to 1.0. They say their philosophy is more to support your creativity from within the game than passing the burden of dealing with more technical problems to our players. And they're aware about Cheat Engine, but they're saying that is not supported by them. It's been known to create some issues, so use it at your own risk. Looking at map expansions, Simon says that generally map expansions should come regularly with their major updates usually in the form of new biomes or content like they released with the Hollow Halls update. So the general plan is to release it when it's ready and not hold it all back and force us to wait for the full release. So with every update, they'll be adding not only bug fixes and improvements, but also content. This can mean things like new quests, new things to do. From time to time, they'll be adding a new part to the world, like a new biome. That will in itself include new enemies, new quests, and much more. As far as adding water to the world, Simon says, don't hold your breath for water. Ha <laughs> ha. And I kind of understand this. They say it's probably one of the most complex features to add to Enshrouded, and we're just in preliminary exploration phases of it and how it would work with their system. So for now, luminescent blocks it is. They talked about how it's really difficult to figure this out when you have a voxel-based world. Would it just be one block of water? What happens when you change the terrain next to it? There's a lot goes into figuring that out and also how it is going to affect the performance of the game, which is something that they're keeping in mind as well. We also found out that they aim to release a smaller sub-biome with their second major update before we get to a whole new biome. This one's going to add more variety and new content to an already existing biome. I wonder where it will be. For the next full-size biome, which is going to be the mountains, they're looking further out than that, several months at least. It still needs a lot more content to come out with it, as well as needing mountain weather. But they're working on development on that in parallel to other additions to the game. They were asked some questions about verticality changes in the world and like things related to Zelda. Would there be sky islands? Would there be things under the ground? Whole other realms to explore? A lot of different things around this. And they said no spoilers, 
But the only thing we will say is that the world is now a full kilometer taller than the map that was available during the closed beta for dot 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 reasons. Hmm, very intriguing. With a follow-up question of hope that also means the world's surface got moved higher to allow more under it, they responded 500 meters of blue sky and 500 meters of good old dirt. That's a lot of up and down verticality going there. Any console versions of Enshrouded are still expected to launch with 1.0. And as far as optimizations for Steam Deck, they kind of say that Steam Deck could do things to help them along in getting this done, it sounds like. So they're still working on it. For NPCs and lore, they say that they are going to continue to extend the lore and the available NPCs over time. We have seen townsfolk NPCs on the roadmap, and they know many of us are hoping to breathe more life into our bases. And so they're hoping to improve NPC interactions and want us to stay tuned for that in a future update. Right now, they're focusing on making our base feel more alive in the way that we interact with NPCs and enriching the world overall with additional wildlife and enemies. They haven't decided yet on how many NPC crafters we're going to end up with in the game. However, they say there are plenty of ideas for different NPC roles, so expect our bases to be a lot more crowded in the future. For weapons, they say that they're always cooking up new ideas for weapons and think we'll be very happy with one of the things we have coming up in the next major update. They're also going to be experimenting with the grapple hook to give it a broader set of features, but couldn't give us details at this point. They mentioned there too that they're always looking into how to improve the UI, so visualizing the crafting chains in a better way is something that they could imagine for the future. And also they're constantly adding more elements to the crafting change, chains, and they'll be having an eye on the community comments to have a sense of the most needed props. And so they welcome suggestions. They are thinking about weapon displays and want us to stay tuned on that one. Another one for building. Prop rotation, they say they currently don't have any plans for increasing that ability, but we'll think about it. The main reason for that is the complexity of their controls in the UI, but they do see the creative value. Another one on water. Simon talks about how simulating liquids in a realistic manner is extremely complex, even in games where the world is static and cannot be modified. If you add the possibility of changing the terrain around the liquid, and even worse, changing it in real time in a volumetric voxel world with networking, the problem becomes orders of magnitude more complex, not to mention demanding in resources. So it was clear that they won't be able to include water into their early access version of Enshrouded, but they wanted to have natural barriers within the shroud, so they designed their lore around that. He says, we love the idea to have water and heard the call from the community, so we want to make it work. It is still a technical research topic for us. In terms of lore, we can imagine that regions above the shroud would leave bodies of water untouched in certain regions. So as expected, that's a big job to add, and it's going to take a while before they're able to figure that one out. Lots of random questions about all different kinds of things, so I'm just going to run through these. The ones that stood out to me. Some people have talked about how it's kind of a pain to pick loot up individually and they say radius based loot pickup is something that they have scheduled as a quality of life improvement. When will we be, when will we be able to level our character up past level 25? They do plan to expand. When can we level our character up past level 25? They do plan to expand the level cap during early access, but it's not currently planned for the next update. Some people would like the changes made in the world by the player outside of their base to stay and be able to be saved that way, but they say that's not currently planned to change the world reset outside of player bases because saving all of those changes would have a significant impact on performance and stability, and they need to be mindful of that. Speaking of changes coming to the world overall, someone mentioned that they're building on a snow mountain near the first spawn and how is that going to affect their base when the mountain biome is introduced into the game? Really good question. Anthony says, we are aware that changes to the world can affect player bases and we try our best to avoid interferences as much as possible. Regarding your specific question, your base should be safe 
as we will expand in the northern region, but there may be changes around it. So the new mountain biome is gonna be coming in the north. If you're in a mountain region farther in the south, some of those vertica verticality issues might impact there, I wonder, or just the other things being added in, like the types of trees or buildings they're gonna add in. A lot of people have wanted to know about this world versus personal progression in the game, whether playing with friends or definitely on a server. And that is currently tentatively scheduled for their next update. They say where they were taken a bit aback by how common this request was because they hadn't realized just how many people would want to hang out in the world exploring and questing even when their friends weren't around because that's not how they were kind of imagining that the game would be played. But he says it's a testament to how immersive the game can be in a fun, here's a new thing nobody thought would be a problem way. So anyway, they're on it. That's good news. They touched a bit on how different player builds are done. And they mentioned a few times that they have noticed that there are people that think that melee is subpar on the damage front and in combat. And they are looking to refine that class balance over time and look more closely at all the comments that they've gotten on that. So they have definitely noticed that feedback. They are gonna be adding more ways for us to add location names like naming our bases, naming custom map markers, and maybe creating named signs. But they don't have an ETA on when those elements are going to become a part of an update. The loot that they're going to continue adding into the game for us to find, like in new places like the Hollow Halls, will not only be in those new places, but they're going to continue adding things in areas of the world that are already accessible to us now. They say we feel your pain concerning the nameless tombstones and they do plan to improve on that. Same for villagers and pets in your base. It's on their roadmap, but it will take some time for those. We don't know any specific timing on improvements for the combat system. They can't say that it's imminent because some of it is still experimental. Carl says, I'm really looking forward to seeing more of the world. I think what we have in store is gonna be really cool. They did mention some things with a big caveat. Most of the things listed in these ideas are projects for the future, meaning end of early access or later. But here are some of the future ideas they've been toying with. World events, instant dungeons, gameplay settings for servers, adding more biomes and expanding the game world, base sharing and user generated content. So those are some dreams for the future. You know, they say it's a little early to talk about what's coming <laughs> post early access. They definitely want to keep working on Enshrouded for as long as they can. They say that they and the community will not run out of ideas of what to add to the game anytime soon. Leave a like if this was helpful and consider free subscribing for more Enshrouded. Until next time, happy gaming.